My name is Wayne Fillmore, and I'll be your host for this evening's programming. Thousands of people around the globe are inflicted with the terrible mental disorder called atheism. Atheism is a mental disorder that takes nearly 4.8 million people around the globe. And it convinces the victims that there is no such thing as truth. There is no God. We all came from a big explosion. We evolved from a puddle of soup to fish to apes to men. and they have absolutely no evidence to claim this. And just for $5 every month, you can generously donate and fund the atheist today. That's how it would be if I had a atheist campaign to fund the atheist. Now, a lot of atheists will have you think they're logical thinkers, they reason, they're smart, they're so great as scientists, And sure, atheists can be great actors, atheists can be great scientists, they can be great producers, they can be great businessmen, they can be great mathematicians. Yes, atheists can be great at things. But in order for them to do anything, they have to reject their own belief in atheism. Meaning this, when a Christian has a disagreement with another Christian, because they have an ultimate standard or because they have an ultimate authority, which is the Bible, then if two Christians disagree on a morally objective subject, they can go to the Bible. When two Muslims disagree about a morally subjective subject, they can go to the Quran. And when two Jews disagree on an issue, they can go to the Torah. But when two atheists disagree, well, who do they go to? Who do they turn to? Uh, they can go to scientists. But then again, if they're atheist scientists, then what is their ultimate authority? Not their authority they can go to sometimes, but... What authority do atheists consistently go to? Which is their ultimate authority for how they live their lives. And the answer to that question is, well, in atheism, the minute you say there is no God, which God being the ultimate authority, the minute you say there is no God, then you don't believe in that ultimate authority. So for any atheist to say anything is true or false, they have to deny their atheism, they have to step out of their atheism, and believe in God when it's convenient for them.
This itself is logically retarded and makes no sense. And it just shoots atheism right in the foot, or atheism shoots itself in the foot. It's a self-refuting lack of belief and authority. It's a lack of belief in truth. It's a lack of belief in right or wrong. So for any atheist to pretend like they have morals, well, you don't. You're an atheist. For anybody to say God is immoral, okay, well, where do you get your morals from? Oh, well, I don't have any morals. What? If you don't have any morals, why are you saying that God is immoral? You have to use God's own morals against God when it's convenient for you. When you don't even believe in morals. In atheism, it's not wrong for me to do anything. In atheism, I could chop somebody's balls off and it would be completely okay. Because there is no ultimate authority if there is no God. If there is no God, there is no right or wrong, there are no absolutes, if there is no God. And for an atheist to say there are no absolutes, they will have to be absolutely sure that there are no absolutes. Atheists say they believe in logic and reasoning and truth. Well, it's completely illogical to think that somehow the truth can evolve. That somehow water can boil at 100 degrees today and it can, be, it can boil at 30 degrees tomorrow. That's illogical. That doesn't make any sense. It's completely illogical to say that there is no such thing as truth. Because if there was no such thing as truth, then that statement that there is no such thing as truth will have to be truth in the first place. That's a self-refuting lack of belief in authority. And the minute you say that there is no God, you have to use these God, this God's moral standard against this God, which you don't even believe in. So, in about five minutes and four seconds, I have debunked atheism. Why don't atheists believe in God? If atheism is illogical and it's not reasonable and if you reject authority and you need authority for truth and right and wrong and everything else, then why would you reject it? Well, it's pretty clear in Proverbs it says that wise people love correction. But fools, they reject authority. Or stupid people reject correction. If you look at almost any atheist lifestyle, they either drink, smoke, watch porn, or addicted to something, they're living in sin, 
and they don't want to stop. Why? Because they hate authority. So in atheism, people reject authority, and they need authority in order to confirm anything. You need an ultimate standard for truth. You need an ultimate authority for right and wrong. You need an ultimate authority for anything, so why would you reject it? Well, because the Bible says they're fools. Atheists don't think about all of that because they're not thinking logically. They're thinking emotionally because they hate God. We all hate God. From birth, we are haters of God. We are constantly shaking our fists at this God that we say we don't believe in, but in our hearts we know we believe in God. Romans put it like this. and the, the book of Romans says that we suppress the truth about God and unrighteousness so we can live however we want. It goes on to say that what may be known about God is evident about God because God has made it evident to all of us. Ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky. Even though people can't see God, they can clearly see the things that God has made that show his eternal power and divine nature so that we are all without excuse. It even goes on to say that even though people knew God, they didn't glorify God as God or give him the praise that he deserved. So God gave them over to a depraved mind. And people started having sex with animals and pets and ots and opals and even with the same sex because they rejected God because they didn't want God's authority. So when you take away the authority given from God, or if you take away God, who is the authority giver, then you don't have any more authority. You can do whatever you want. If there were no police forces on the streets, well, people would do whatever they wanted. If there was no authority, then people would do whatever is right in their own eyes. So, people are atheists not because of evidence. Evidence is not the issue. Because the evidence points towards Jesus. But people are atheists because they don't want anything to do with God. They hate God. And even to prove that, A lot of people don't believe in Smurfs. Nobody believes in Smurfs. So, you know, making a fan page devoted to I Hate Smurfs or making a I Hate Smurfs fan club or going around trying to convert people to Ag Smurfians. Ag Smurfism. Oh man, that's a funny word. Ag Smurfism. Trying to convert people about some religion that teaches that Papa Smurf isn't real because if Papa Smurf was real, he would love all his children because Papa Smurf is a jerk and blah, blah, blah. Talking about Papa Smurf, well, it wouldn't really work because nobody believes in Papa Smurf. When it comes to God, people go, when they talk about this God they don't believe in, and they make it their purpose in life to tell other people there is no purpose in life. I know, that is crazy. So, atheists don't believe in God, not because of evidence, but because they hate him.
and they even tied this video to the last video. What is your ultimate authority that there is no God? Because each atheist has their own source of where they get their own authority or information from. Ultimate information from of how they live their lives, of why there is no God. If you go to seven or eight atheists and ask them why there isn't a God, one atheist will say, I don't believe in God because my mom died. Another atheist will say, if there was a God, I'd be rich. Another atheist will say, I don't believe in God because of evolution. Another guy will say, I don't believe in God because of the Big Bang Theory. I don't believe in God because if God was real, he wouldn't let my sister die. So people have all these different reasons, but they don't have the true ultimate source of why they don't believe in God. What is your ultimate authority that you can go to that is written down for all atheists? Because in order for it to actually be an ultimate authority, all atheists need to accept this as an ultimate authority. Like Christians accept the Bible as an ultimate authority. So, if you think I'm wrong, and if you think you don't believe in God because you don't hate God, and if you obviously reject what the Bible says about that, and you think I'm wrong, make a video telling me why I'm wrong, but you have to use an ultimate authority. It doesn't even have to be a whole ultimate authority of all atheists, it can just be your ultimate authority. And you just have to use that as a reference that you can go to with me. So when I make my video, I can crush your ultimate authority and prove why the Bible is still right. If you watched the last video, I talked about why atheists don't believe in God. And just to recap a little bit of what I said. Well, this is what the Bible has to say. The Bible says that righteous people or wise people, they love correction. But fools, they hate correction. Why? Well, I think we all had a friend who doesn't like us to tell them what to do. Whenever we try to tell them something is wrong, they assume that we're personally trying to attack them when we're just looking out for their best interests. And we say, hey, you shouldn't do this or that, and they take it as a personal attack on their character. And it's not the fact that we don't like them, but we're actually telling them these things because we like them, because they're our friend. But they just don't get it, and they push us away because they obviously think that their way of doing things are better than your suggestions of how they should do things. And that's how it is with God. God merely makes a suggestion of how you should live your life. And how you can have a relationship with Him again. And if you don't want to go by those suggestions, you don't have to. I think from birth, we all hate authority. We all hate people telling us what to do and telling us how to live. If we have a group of people telling us what they think we should do 
or we have people on Facebook telling us that our opinion on such and such is wrong, our first reaction is to argue. Our first reaction is debate and to rebuttal and to rebel. But understand this, the moment that you say there is no God, there is no all-knowing being, and that God does not exist, you then have to step into the realm of being all-knowing. And because no atheist knows everything, they can't possibly know if an all-knowing being exists or not. Now, in the Greek, the word a means no. The word gnosis means knowledge. So whenever somebody calls them themselves an agnostic, they say that they have no knowledge. So, whenever an atheist hears Romans 118, where the Bible says that they have knowledge of God, Well, the only place for them to go is they have to say that they have no knowledge of God. Making them an agnostic atheist. So, why don't all atheists just say that they're agnostic atheists and they don't know if God exists? Because if they say they know that God exists, then they have to agree with Romans 118. That says they know God exists, but the reason why they reject God is because they want to live how they want to live. The moment you say there is no God and there is no ultimate authority, then you yourself have to be the ultimate authority. And like we're seeing in America today, people are consistently and more and more with each passing day are rejecting the Bible and are rejecting the God of the Bible and just are reject they're rejecting any type of standard altogether. So when you reject a standard and say there is no standard, well then that is the standard. The standard is that there is no standard. So that itself is a standard. And the moment you say anybody can do anything that they want, anybody can have sexual relations with whoever they want, and anybody can marry anything or anybody they want, well then we have people who go and marry bridges in America, people who marry their dogs in London, people who have sex with animals and animal brothels in Russia, and so on and so forth. And 
nobody can say anything about how this is right or wrong if there is no standard. If there is no ultimate authority, all we have are suggestions. And that's how it is with God. God merely makes a suggestion of how you should live your life and how you can have a relationship with Him again. And if you don't want to go by those suggestions, you don't have to. I can suggest that something is not right for me. I can have preferences, but for any atheist to say that anything is immoral or illogical, that is a cop-out. As a matter of fact, if atheism is true, you shouldn't believe in logic, you shouldn't believe in truth, you shouldn't believe in reasoning. In atheism, atheists believe in naturalism. Naturalism is where you only believe in things that you can test, observe, repeat, or observe with your five senses. You cannot observe logic with your eyes, your nose, your ears, taste, or feeling. You can't go to the refrigerator and get a bottle of logic. And you can't test logic. Logic isn't something that you can repeat. And logic certainly isn't something that is scientifically naturalistic. Logic is a supernatural thing that naturalists try to account for using a supernatural worldview when it is convenient. What am I talking about? Atheists choose when and when not to believe in God because in order for an atheist to say anything is logical or illogical they then have to drop their atheism come over to Christianity use our way of thinking our way of logic our way of reasoning because Christians can account for logic we know where logic comes from logic doesn't have to be observable or testable or repeatable in Christianity because we believe in things that we cannot see. But atheists don't. So how can atheists account for this? Because they only believe in things that they can observe. If you're an atheist, and if you can account for logic or reasoning or truth or right or wrong, comment below. One more thing. Whenever a Christian makes a very intellectual point about anything, or they make a good argument with an atheist, you will notice that atheists will resort to name-calling, 
They will resort to blasphemy. They will resort to going around the question, pointing the finger, or they will say that Christians don't understand because Christians either aren't scientists or because Christians aren't atheists. Thousands of people around the globe are inflicted with the terrible mental disorder called atheism. Now, if you don't believe me, look at the comments below and look at the people who make the illogical fallacies of asking loaded questions, of pointing the finger at Christians instead of answering the true question. Because Christians can account for morality and reasoning and logic. Can atheists do the same? And look at how many atheists blaspheme God's name and then call.